right, Tasteless, we are back. But more importantly, someone pointed out that apparently there are space laws. But here's wow. the thing. There's no space police, Tasteless. I know. I can jaywalk right to the moon. Who's going to stop me? Who's going to give me a ticket? Well, gravity will for one, but everything else, yes. <laughs> You're correct, Artosis. <laughs> what if I have magnet shoes and there's a metal bridge? Yeah, you didn't think You're of that. Fine. No. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> oh. How could you be so foolish? Stupid, <laughs> stupid man! Oh, uh, so we oh yeah. Just, and by the way, the the tongue thing apparently that's a taunt in Japan. It's like it's it's more childish, but what it's is? like you know how you were going like this. Oh, this apparently and like a sticking your tongue out. It's like a taunt in Japan. It's not so much a middle finger. It's a uh, it's a taunt. It's not like that or whatever. No, you just <laughs> they're like blurred Some out. Nerds like, like, really, guys? Some guys. Like, I can't believe that he did TV? that. No, I did that. I did that. And here's the thing, nobody cares. Um, so we got a really exciting match coming up here. Yeah. Um, okay, I don't speak hamster, first of all. And then second of all, uh, I think Lena can beat MVP. He can. He can. He In absolutely fact, can. He Didn't he knock MVP out of MLG? I think. Wait, what? Did I think he did. I think maybe. Cause, uh, Dude, he we've done too many tournaments back to back. I, 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 I want to say yes. We're just going to pretend not, he did. Uh, he like, could have. No, it was this guy. How did like, he uh, not know that? Or maybe, was it MC? It might have been MC. Whatever. Whatever. One of those M, <laughs> two to three letter names. I can't MC, remember oh, right oh, this oh, man. Oh, oh, it's fine. It's fine. So, so, we're going to so, have a quick little interview. I didn't expect my teammate Oz to fall out. I was surprised. So, this time, this is the champion of Jong Jong Hyun. Hello, Mr. Oz. 우선 세 시즌 연속으로 4강 온 것만으로도 너무 기분 좋고요. 네, 이번에 기회를 잡아서 꼭 3시 so 잘하겠습니다. 네. 자, 그리고 두 선수의 경기가 이번 시즌 가장 손꼽히는 공. And if I win this will be the third straight season that I'm in the finals and pumped. 어, 선수 이번에 정종현 선수를 상대로 몇대몇 몇 예상하시나요? 개인적으로 <웃음> 3대 0으로 이기고 싶은데 어, 잘 될지 모르겠는데 3대 0으로 이기고 싶어요. 네, 살짝 정종인 선수가 노려보는 게 있었습니다. 정종인 선수는 몇대 몇으로 <웃음> 이길 것 같습니까? 저는 한 3대 0이나 3대 1 정도 예상하고 있습니다. 네, 알겠습니다. 어떻게 될지는 이 이후에 잠시 알수 있겠죠. 어, 그러면 마지막으로 이제 팬들에게 보내는 각오 한 마디 부탁드리겠습니다. 이동경 선수부터. 어, 저그로 혼자 남게 됐는데 어, 저그 유저 마지막 남은 저그 유저로서 최선을 다하는 모습 보여드리겠습니다. 오, 자, 정준 선수도 I'm the only Zerg in the tournament, so I'm going to do my best. 항상 응원해 주셔서 감사드리고요. 저번에 준승했는데 이번에는 꼭 결승 가서 우승하도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 네, 두 선수의 각오까지 잘 들어왔습니다. 이두 선수 중 정준 선수의 상대가 될 선수는 어떤 선수가 될지. 두 선수 바로 출발해 주세요. This is like the fastest interview we've ever done. This is like the speed run of interviews. Tasteless. If MVP makes it to the finals again, there's one question that we have to ask. What? Is MVP the new Terran Bone Drop? This becomes another Team Liquid article. It's just congratulating like a bunch of pro gamers. But what is this? There's like a blacked out picture with a guy who's got a question mark on his you know, face, you know? If your hands teased it, you can match that. Whoa, look at this. All wins. For MVP. MVP needs to chill out, man. He needs to, my God. He needs to cut it out, man. He hasn't lost a key yet. MVP doesn't lose. He's no, he's what? really good. He's like, no? Um, by the way, I have like a true theory about Lenok and why he's crushing right now. A true theory? A true theory. And I'm pretty sure that this theory could be <laughs> done. It's, hey, I know there's some scientists out there watching this. Please scientifically prove this for me because I'm pretty sure it's the case. So here it is. 
Uh, Lenox just crushed MLG, right? And Nesty was right. there. I think this is what happens. In the future, I think that Lenox is actually just a young Nesty. And in the future, Nesty invents time travel, of course. Who else would invent it? Nobody Travels else back in time and plays Zerg in this time so that Lenox can learn from him and become him. Oh my god. I'm pretty certain. Scientists, hit me up on Twitter. Let me know when you've proved this scientifically. Because I'm pretty sure it's the case. Some scientist right now is about to put hairspray in a monkey's eyes, but instead he's going to do something good for the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, scientist. We need to see how this ape reacts mm -hmm. to poison. <laughs> Oh my god, he dies. He Look dies. at that. He writes it in his notebook. Well, thank god we have lots of monkeys. Anyways, uh, this is the record here, as you can see, for these guys. Uh, MVP beating Nest T. Look, look at the lineup of people MVP actually had to play. It's insane. July, Dongergoo, Nest T. And just Nest T a lot. Yeah. <laughs> here we have Gonzi and Snare Pult MMA alive. Impressive uh, history there, but not quite comparable to MVPs. You know, Lenox MLG run maybe a bit more impressive than that. Taking oh, out most of the best players. Clothes off. In he fact, Lenok beat like every MLG champion right in a row. Out of here. So take off all your clothes. I, I am MVP. So I want to take, take my clothes off. off. Yeah. Lenok <laughs> actually just puts more clothes on. I'm like, damn. He gets in a hazmat suit. Oh, boy. All right, cool. Nice lineup for maps. <laughs> yep. Why are you looking at me like that? I think it's a I'm nice just smiling at, at you. I like you. Thank you. I like you too. <coughs> MVP rolling up his sleeves a little bit. Now taking this cordy thing. Then do something with that. Plug it in. Probably plug it in. There we go. Plug that in right there. He chokes out a little nerd. A very little nerd with it. It's like there's a... Uh, what is it? Garrotes? What? The, the, the coupling things that you tr strangle people with if you're in the CIA. Oh, I don't like know the word. I, no, I know what something? you're talking about, yeah. I don't know, it's something like that. Well, we're going to see what happens here. By the way, on the left, uh, for Lenok, that's actually a hand warmer. Yeah. Uh, so he uses that to keep the blood in his hands warm. That's uh, important, Which actually man. is very important. You cannot play Stark up with cold hands. That's true. Somebody's like, what, really? Down. No, I'm actually I'm completely Your serious. hands just do not move as well. Yeah. I but mean, uh, it's terrible on cold days, man. It's so hard to play StarCraft. Yeah, it's really hard. Actually. I used to, like, I lived... Uh, I remember being in a tournament, actually, where it was like uh, the event oh, was yes. like a big tent. And I'm I've like, been in those. And I was like, listen, man, like, I can't play. Like, do not put me at the computer near the door. I'm actually too cold. Yeah, yeah. I cannot move my hands correctly. I would actually go into the bathroom in between rounds at cold tournaments and run my hands under hot water and then sit on them inside my pants, like holding my butt cheeks to warm them up. Makes sense. Yeah. They just have to be warm, man. That's how I want to prepare for a But nowadays, Genesis. when I go to a tournament, I just bring tasis and put them near his heart. Oh. When I prepare for a tournament, I just I put, I put warm water in my hands, and then I hold them on Artosis' butt cheeks until it's time to play the game. <laughs> then I go. All right. Lenok up against MVP. This, whoever wins this, will be the favorite going to the finals. So this is pivotal yes. moment here. Will MVP continue to be the most dominant force in StarCraft II in eSports? Some might even call him... The MVP of StarCraft yeah, 2. Yeah, he's staying true to his name. Or is Lenok going to become Neon ST? We're going to find out soon. I'm Tasis with me as Artosis. And this is the GSL Code S. The greatest show ever. ever. Take that, people from the future. <laughs> you want to make fun of me? I'm already dead if you're watching this. I don't care. <laughs> Someone tomorrow was like, no, Tasis died. <laughs> In the upper right. <laughs> <laughs> we have our Zerg. Epic He's been lean knocking nerds out of tournaments left and right, man. Well said. Thanks. In the bottom left, we have our Terran player right now, the Game Genie Terran. I am MVP. This is a uh, pretty what? quick drone scout by Lee. Oh, look at this, Artosis. Oh, interesting. But, uh, it's about as interesting as our stats. 49% of people thought that um, Lee Nock was going to win this. I'm not saying 
that he can't win this. I'm just surprised it's that close to MVP. I thought it was going to be think, something like 60-40. Yeah, I think it's because of his MLG run. I mean, he, he really showed uh, another level of play from what we're used to, and we've always been used to him being really good. So, But you and, see, the, the beauty of this is that it's it's behind the smoke screen. He may panic and send the drone immediately to the yeah. center of the map. Will it work? I think he's going to check for it. Yep. Does see exactly what's going on. Now, with that quick gas and no wall in, I do wonder what build uh, MVP is actually going for here, whether it's going to be Reactor Hellions or perhaps Reaper. He could if he wanted to just move it back. It might just be like one small little thing he does just to make sure. Sure. That, yeah. uh, well, just to see if Leenock perhaps bites the bait and then scrambles his build. Yeah, good choice as well. I'm really excited to see what uh, style we're going to see out of MVP. For Leenock, it's pretty standard. I mean, he's, he's going to make a lot of drones, get as many bases as possible. Muta's Lings, Banelings, maybe Infestors later on, based upon what he sees in Scouts. But for MVP, this is a guy that uh, has been doing mech recently a decent amount in this matchup. Not all the time, but a decent amount. So we have a factory on the way. No reactor yet. Perhaps that's what this barracks is about to do. Would not be surprised. Okay, so we have uh, the Overlord continuing to poke around the map. Yeah, and Reactor Hellions. Yep. So, That's fine. Not, I think it was probably one of the better builds you could do for game one against uh, yeah, Leenok. Do a middle-of-the-road build. Opening. You know, get a litmus test for how solid he actually is against the best Terran player in the world, MVP, yeah. uh, with the most standard build. Get a read on that. And, uh, in fact, another good thing about it is that Leenok's going to know, I guarantee you he's watched every MVP game, yeah. He's going to know that there's definitely a possibility for mech. And the opening of a reactor at Hellion is, it doesn't tell you one way or another. It tells you, oh, there's already a factory. And it transitions very well into bio as well. So, could be anything. It's just, Lee Nock is going to be pretty off guard. So, we have um, a little bit of downtime. Basically, he's going to keep cranking out Hellions. We don't know the exact number because it can vary. And uh, from there, we're going to see where the game goes. I mean, we just going to have a little bit of downtime here, guys. So sit tight. So, Artosis. Yes. Uh, what is your take on the Spork? Uh, I actually do own one Spork, a Titanium Spork, in fact, that my brother got for me uh, for my birthday once. Okay, and hold the phone. Your brother got you a Spork for your birthday? Yeah. Not everyone's rich tastes. <laughs> I don't know. It was kind of, it was like... I think you got off, like, Think Geek or something? Think Geek? Yeah, like, it's a site with all sorts of kind of nerdy little things that you can get. Oh, sick. He's getting two command centers. Oh, that is cool. But uh, the Spork Tasteless, to get back on point, instead of talking about this silly game. No, I'm joking. It's not silly. But to get back on point to your question, the Spork, uh, I, I like my Spork. Uh, plastic Sporks can be useful because if you're using plastic utensils, obviously you're, you're somewhere that... Uh, you just need it to be functional. But my spork, I do like it. It's It matters exactly what you're eating. I oftentimes, it just happens so often that I'm out of forks and I'm eating uh, spinach and I have to use a spork. In that case, it's not so good. But with other foods, it's good. can be very useful. Very good, in fact. Again, I was just saying very good against eggs. That's yeah. kind of a funny thing. Oh, way no, to no. It. It's a great matchup against the egg, man. Yeah. It's very easy eggs with the sport. I like uh, the Zerg's wall in here. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got the Evo chamber down at the bottom. That's going to make the uh, Zerg, uh, uh, the Terran, excuse me, a little bit apprehensive about trying to just dart up there. Mm -hmm. And the six Hellions, uh, Leenok reacting properly. He's getting a second spine crawler. He has some speedlings up there. And a Marauder. That's going to be a scary thing. Basically yeah. for Leon. I he's think gonna Leonok, be like, oh, oh. think he's being all in. Yeah. It's so smart by MVP. It's so smart. In fact, we do have uh, some more lings on the way, a baneling nest. He's being pretty careful. He's making No, oh, he does have the two spine crawlers, he has all his queens up front, so he's missing a few injects here and there. It's this is actually just some high level mind games going on because that Marauder actually I mean it's it has no use other than that. Okay, so we have the engineering bay on the way here, and right now I gotta say MVP is looking slick. Yeah, this is all really well thought out, really intelligent. He's gonna get that reactor star port up, and then I'm sure he'll start sea chinks right away because he does have the three command centers. So that's just like a smart move, you know. Get 
Uh, get those sea chanks out so you can actually take that third base safely. Floating it down to the low ground to make it there. Moving that depot so we can make a tech lab. Okay, so the Banelings Nest here in the, uh, also great for this little kind of wall off. Uh, I'm wondering when he's going to float that command center. And I'm also wondering if he'll actually float that to the normal third or what. I mean, he could technically float that to the uh, upper left uh, third base. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I don't think he'll put it there, though, because if don't you're going to so. go there, I think you're going to want a planetary. It's going to be a hard place actually, to defend. Actually, you know what? You're right. And also, if he was really going to go there, he probably would have just built it there. Mm. You don't you don't build a command center in your main and then float it somewhere secret. Yeah, that's that doesn't make any a sense. Little bit more Unless rare. it's like an island or something. I don't think we have any islands on any pro maps right now. Uh, not not ones that you can't get to by destroying rocks. Yeah, which I, I don't. I think they should. There should be some islands. Well, I'd, I'd like to test around with it a little bit, yeah. certainly. Well, that marauder just got so damn lucky. Yeah, it's man. like the most badass marauder. It's actually ever. funny because the banelings. Uh, it's it's the perfect little combo because the banelings. Oh, look at this! Actually, the spine crawler's coming down, and there you go, using stim even. Spinecrawler's taking a lot of damage, but not targeting them, really. But anyways, that little thing that we just saw with the Marauder, you can't kill it with the Lings, because the Hellions will torch the Lings, and it takes too many Banelings to kill, so actually running away was the right choice. It was really yeah. kind of a cute little thing. And oh my god, that's a lot of speed legs! And he doesn't get them quite right, especially with those Marines stimming and running forward. Seven Mutas and Baneling speed almost done, while MVP does finally take his third base. Siege mode on the way, some Siege Shanks as well. Just both players playing very standardly right now, but the problem is that MVP has that third up before Leenok. In fact, 54 SCVs to 56 drones. I love how he left the Marauder there at that expansion. Mm. It's these little things that he's doing. I mean, wh why not a Hellion? Why not a uh, Marine? Well, he doesn't need the Marauder right now, but the Marauder is, of course, tougher than a Zerkling mm -hmm. and obviously tougher than a drone. I don't know. It's smart. Dude. It's these little subtle things about uh, MVP's playstyle that I just yeah. totally am in love with. And those Hellions doing a pretty good job against these Lings. I'm surprised he's investing the Lings so heavily when he has the yeah. Nudas there. Uh, but MVP is actually making some of the best missile turrets I've seen. He's got great positioning on everything he has. His third is up quicker. He has like, seriously, his missile turrets are awesome right now. He can't be harassed. He's actually foolproof against harassment. And Leenok actually making a lot of Lings and a lot of Banes. He might be going for he an attack here. He might go for here. a bus, actually. In fact, I, I think he is, Tasis. Well, he has to be. I mean, if he's making the Banelings right out there. Only two Siege Tanks out, so this is going to be kind of scary. He might actually be able to do this. This may happen, Tasteless. It is right now. Here we the go. Zerlings, the Banelings moving down now. The Mutas. Targeting here. those Banes as best he can. Spreading out the Marines. Does he have enough Banelings? He does. Oh, wow. A lot of damage being dealt here. Oh, a sea chain being left alive and killing a lot of those Banes. But that third base in a lot of trouble. Medivac's being taken out, and Leenok takes the supply lead. Wow, MVP just a little bit too greedy here. Greed is becoming the name of the game in high-level StarCraft 2, and that's actually good. That's actually a good thing, because that will players will eventually tone it back and figure it out, man. Thank God the days of one and two base all-ins are gone. Brilliant. Takes out the turret. Some more Lings and Amutas gathering up here. Now here's one way MVP could come back. If he could gun down the hatch. Oh yeah, that's actually huge if he does that. Look at that. He's, he's microing the Marines away. Ah, he's going to get it. This game's going to get crazy. If he can actually shoot that down. He has to just try to get it down. There's no way he's going to get out of there anyways. Uh, targeting Mutas now. Yep. He targeting realizes. Nope. Well. No way the hatch is going to go down. Mm -hmm. Smart move. I'll at least take out a Muta or two. And there's a lot of damage there, so Leenok has to be very careful. Uh, Leenok right now taking a big drone lead. He's going to be up to 77 drones in just a second as those 10 finish against just 58 SCVs. Two factories up for MVP, realizing that he needs a lot more Siege Shanks against attacks like we just saw. And, ooh, I love that, man. Look at that. A couple burrowed lings right there. He says, nope. Nope. Waste a mule. Nope. Mule worth a lot more than two lings. Oh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Almost. Leenok continuing great upgrades. Plus two melee on the way. Already has 1-1 one, one for his Zerglings. Plus two Mutalisk attack on the way as well. But a Thor is going to be popping out Tasteless. And that's going to help out immensely against the Mutas with no armor. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny, but it was. All right. Um, he is finally able to take out those Zerglings. 
Leenok, again, he's always doing these little subtle things. Yeah. He's always the guy who's dropping the creep at their next natural base. He's always got a, uh, sometimes even a Zerglian Bro there with the creep. Mm -hmm. And it's all these little subtle things that if a good player doesn't uh, catch on and fix that right away, yeah. he loses. Yeah. Or he, he loses enough time that Leenok can take a massive lead. Exactly. You know, tiny little advantages over time turn into a massive lead. There's no question about that. And Leenok is one of the Zergs that's really figuring that out so well and how, all the different ways how to do it. Now he is taking a fourth base. I like the location. I love he's taking down the rocks. Yeah, it's great. That's, that's a very it's hard so location. so accessible. Yeah, and how does MVP really attack there? That's going to be a hard place to attack, no doubt about it. MVP getting ready with some uh, some droppage. Just two Marines being sim. Now that is just so beautiful to see, man. What? <laughs> ah, there we go. Thor coming up, but... The two Marines oh. at first, awesome. And, oh, does he that pick that? Unfortunately, intercept this. yeah, that that drop is not long for this world. All right, he's trying to jump out over here. It doesn't matter. Nothing. A lot of Mutas are out right now. 23, in fact. And oh! Lenok is everywhere. Yeah, Lenok's got some bulletproof defense. By the way, it's 180 supply for the Terran, 194 here for the Zerg. Uh, and he's going to push out. So now it's the big moment, guys. We've been building up to this point in time. He doesn't have a ton of Siege Shanks, but Leonok doesn't actually have a ton of units. So we see some of them getting taken out. MVP wants to kill this base over here so Looks badly. Looks like he actually will. Yeah, there's not enough Banelings out on the map right now, actually. Leonok is getting Pathogen lands, and look at that. I love that. Simming just a few off, but a oh! Siege Shanks. Uh-oh. MVP could be in a lot of trouble here. He does have 2-1 against the 2-1 of his opponent, so very even upgrades. But MVP losing all these medevacs, that is a terrible thing. In fact, he's going to lose his whole army over here, too. All right, very nice here. Wow. Those mutas just cleaning that up. But, you know, he did take out that third base, so even though Leenok held up the, you know, well, wiped out the attackers, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, he, the mission was a success for MVP. He got rid of the base. Certainly, yeah. I mean, three base Terran versus three base Zerg, I would be totally fine being that Terran. Now, here's what he's going to do. He's going to push again, get a meta back, uh, and head that towards that expansion over there. Now, we're going to see if it actually gets over there or not. But where is that meta back? I saw, okay, it's up, it's up the upper left. Yeah. Right. I couldn't see it on the mini, on the mini map for a second. My Meantime, we do have a lot of Banelings underway. The Greater Spire being made, a lot more Lings as well. And this is uh, this okay. is a hard position for MVP, man. I really like Lenox's position over his. There's not enough Siege Shanks out to really deal with all okay, these here Banelings. here we go. Uh, if he gets his hatch, actually I don't think he will. It should be denied pretty easily. But he should be able to gather. The Mutas are way out of position right now for that. Yeah. And MVP again, just slowly occupying more and more and more of the map. And he's building some extra Thors, which, uh, you know, he doesn't have enough Siege Shanks. And Fester Baneling going to be just so strong against him because of that. In fact, he has only two Siege Tanks, and that's nowhere near enough. The one thing that is good, he is keeping Leenok down to three base over and over. If he does kill it, that would be pretty huge. Muta's flying down to try to deal with it. I'm surprised he did not send any lanes. Is he gonna get this? He stems one more time. Actually, no. no. Not Halfway quite. When I, when I was like, e, I actually realized it was just yeah. not gonna die no matter what. But I had to keep going. You know. That's all right. He made it exciting. Thank e. you. All right, the Muta's. You know, MVP's gotta be careful. He's actually getting a lot of. Yeah, he's trying to sneak in and kill these hatches, and it it's just, just not, not working. happening. You think at least one of them would have worked, but it's not. All right, he's gotta try again. Oh, this is so funny. The mutas are like right there, and oh my god! Oh, 57 hit points. Oh man. Oh jeez, Louise. In fact, he does have another drop out on the top left. And here we go, MVP has decided, now is the time. Here is the place. Leenok a little bit out of position, his Lings and Banelings are all over the place. But the Broodlords are gonna push everything back. He has killed that Hatchery off. Broodlords pushing back Siege Shanks and Thors and Marines. Okay, so he brings out the Queens because he wants to uh, transfuse onto the Broodlords. That's pretty good. And they're all alone, you never fight alone with Broodlords. No! Oh no, he's down to just two. And that actually might cost Leenok the game. And no, I know it doesn't seem like it should be as big of a deal as it is, but yeah, you Broodlords know, are so that, important. That Broodlord count, that's what he was going for, for the killing move. But 
you just can't lose him, man. And look at this. MVP kind of all over the place. Is Lenok actually starting to fall apart? We even have a drop in the main base. Everywhere He's also going to lose that other expansion he at the top left. He did lose, and he lost expansion at the bottom right, too. And there you go. Yeah, all expansions being killed. All your base are belong to MVP. Mm. He is so good. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's so funny because Leenock was, was key, holding his own against MVP, yeah. and then within the course of about a minute. I feel like with the army he had before, he could have probably killed off MVP's army, but engaging with just the Broodlords, he lost too many, and now... MVP has a good number of Thors, a decent number of Marines. He's got great upgrades. He's got that plus three attack. The plus three armor is about to finish. He's got some Vikings out. Whereas Leenok, uh, you know, his army isn't really getting that much better. He's adding some Broodlords. But oh, no! Oh, big deal oh, right there. There's something going for Leenok. Yep. Leenok's mutas are everywhere. In fact, Leenok right now going after this planetary, but the Thors up there are going to give him a hard time. Luckily, he has staying magic box. Oh my god. Well, there goes a bunch of mutas. That was about six or seven mutas killed off really quickly. And um, the problem right now for Leenok is because he's doing a great job defending for most of these drops for the most part. The problem is, is he ever going to have a fourth base up and running for very long? Because eventually, base two and three are going to run out of minerals, and that's when things are going to start getting ugly. Well, here come the Broodlords. This is a very important moment. If he deals with the Broodlords cost efficiently, he should be good to win the game. But this is, I mean, this is Leenok's chance. He knows he has all those queens up there. He has Infestor. He has a lot of Banelings. We will see right, if we have he can do it. Do we have any ghosts out at all? Uh, no ghosts for nope. tonight, right? Okay. All right, no here we go. Whatsoever. And, well, losing a lot of Banelings there. Some mutas going down as well. Nice transfusion there yeah. on the Broodlord. How, many, how much more energy do the queens? The queens actually have some, a lot of energy. And notice how the Thor is covering those Vikings as the Mutas fly up as the anti-air here. Queens, of course, can be anti-air as well. He's but doing it, man. Yeah, these all he's these transfuses, man. Win. He's doing a great job, but MVP still has a lot of supply, still has a lot of units. And he's going for it. The Banelings coming in here, but a lot of Marines are left over. Corruptors coming up. How many Brewers? Oh, my God, he still has oh, a lot of Brewers. But the, the Marines Lords. in range of these Corruptors right now. Doing a lot of damage to them as they are taken right, out finally. The supply right now for MVP is down to 105. Yeah. 131 right now for Leenok. So many great transfusions this game, Faceless. Absolutely awesome play by Leenok and MVP. But it looks like Leenok's may have been a bit better. 99 supply to 127. Leenok is actually baby Nest This is so sick, Artosis. That's right, Faceless. Leenok should be happy to know he's going to live for a thousand years because that's how old MVP was when he came back in time. Yeah. Well, um, Leenok now has two fresh operational bases. The, the, the center one, a little bit to the north, and the upper left uh, starting location. So, damn, man. Yeah, this is actually insane. Leenok has played so well. He's making seven Infestors now. Knowing that Seed Shanks are gone, Infestors can actually dominate all the units that MVP is making right now. You know, Vikings and Marines and a few Thors mixed in. Infester is the name of the game. It is. MVP almost not mining, floating his main command center over towards the middle. But Leenok just has too much. Yeah. yeah. Goodbye, Vikings. <laughs> I can't believe it. MVP's actually doing it. I mean, uh, Leenok's actually doing it. Excuse yeah. me. Um, all he has to do is take out this force in the middle and one more time destroy that expansion in the lower center. Mm -hmm. And that's it. All MVP still trying to fight back right now. Some good uh, fungal growths going off. The Thor has been repaired, so he'll take a while to kill. Oh my god, he actually is going to do the hatchery. I didn't even notice the tells was that low until like the last second. I'm like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. He's actually going to die. Well, well done. Well, maybe Lena uh, has got to try a little bit harder here. Well, it's, it, I mean, it's not completely over. Leenok definitely has a pretty decent lead, though. He's making so many Infestors. He may have overmade Infestors. You know, I feel like against the unit composition that MVP's going, he hasn't. It's the Thor can't really be killed by the Infestors. He could get Neural, but what, what's the point? Uh, just fungling all of the Marines and maybe even the SCVs at that third base, or fourth base, rather, all right, are well, good choices. Let's see if he can hold his base over here. Okay, a drop at the main, killing up Zerglings. That's huge. That means no more Zerglings or Banelings for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Artosis, what the hell is going on? Well, MVP is saying... Is MVP actually going to come back? I mean, there is a possibility. And, oh, nice scan right there. Good choice. Good oh, choice. no, the Thor. Oh, my God. Leenok just made a huge mistake. 
over on the ramp near this base that I guess we'll never well, show we you. We need to get a shot of the ramp, Jay. We can get a shot of the ramp of the uh, upper left base. No, not gonna I think happen. it's too late. No. The Thor well, was blocked. Basically, the Thor killed off a ton of infestors and then just ran away from infested Terrans. Okay, so this is actually how good MVP is. MVP is actually dead, and he comes back from the dead, not as a zombie. And looks like he will kill this all off with the Dude, what? Terrans. This is yeah, actually I happening. I can't believe I'm even casting this game. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Four Ultras are on the way, but MVP's supply continues to go up. And he lost so many Infestors, man. He had a ton of Infestors. The Thor ended up killing so many of them, though. He still has a good number. He has 10 Infestors still, but... Ugh. This is brutal, man. Yeah, this is a wild game, actually, to be honest. He really is. Uh, at this point, Lenok is really not even mining, but he still has a very good army. Well... I think his MVP actually, is... MVP officially won this. If you like take a close look over here on the mini map, there's like there's nothing left. It was so close for a little bit, but you know, I don't know, man. I can't believe MVP was actually. With the Ultras good. coming out, this is going to be the last chance for Leon. Yeah, and he's gonna have to come way back, take out this army, move all the way down, take out the base we have a shot of now, uh, and secure his own base. And that's a pretty tall order. Well, here he goes. He's gonna bring the drones as well. A yeah. very close game. So back and forth, in fact. And Lenok is not mining at all. His income is actually zero on everything. Uh-oh. All right, he's dropping over here. Very good fungals right now. Uh, you know, it's really smart of MVP to do this. He brings his army over here and kind of pulls Lenok back. Meanwhile, MVP is just getting uh, the best possible defense get up. No, that is not a planetary that expansion, so that is actually a killable thing. Nice, nice fungals. Fungal going off. Ultra's trying to be cost efficient here, but there is just too much tasteless. Looks like okay, it nice. Should be GG. Wow. So that game was actually super interesting in the way it went. It was so back and forth, and both players made these little mistakes that really gave huge advantages to their opponents. For instance, MVP taking that third base that quickly. Lenok just made a ton of banelings and rolled through him. Uh, you know, we also had. Uh, at the end when Lenok lost all those Infestors. Uh, in the middle where Lenok lost a lot of Broodlords. There were all these little points where it's like, oh my god, it looks like he has just enough to to get the lead that will win him the game. And then yeah. the mistake is made, which is fine. This is like, that was an, an unbelievably well-played and high-level game. You can't expect anyone to play a perfect game, but wow. MVP really stayed calm because he was dead a couple times. He was in. Dude, I, I mean, Lenok had in, some in every scary sense, armies. He looked so dead. Yeah. I mean, there were periods where I was like, okay, MVP, you probably should leave the game right now and save your. And then he just something else drops and everywhere back. at once, kills hatcheries and a spawning pool, and it's like, <gasps> wow. And he kills four broodlords that are out in the open. It's like, oh, MVP's god. like in the booth. He's like, his hands are just like glowing. He's like, oh my god, the prophecy is true. The prophecy is I true. I am the chosen one. He is sick. All right, so we're going to go to the next map, which is going to be on dual site. Ah. Uh, I don't know if Lena can beat MVP after that game. I do not know. Well, that's going to be a sad one for him because, again, he had so many infestors, and he was going uh, ultra tech against, like, marine, like, some Vikings, and, like, a Thor. And then what you guys didn't get to see is he was running into a Thor on a ramp and lost so many infestors. Yeah, we I was just like, oh, wow, he can actually go up. We fungal everything and throw down infested Terrans everywhere, and MVP can't mine. Like yeah. He could walk through the middle map with just his Infestors at that point, but he he split them up and lost a bunch from all over the place, used a lot of energy, not necessarily that efficiently, and uh, MVP was able to just squeeze that one out, man. That was really close, though. It was pretty sick, He man. squeezed that one out like it was the last of the toothpaste and the toothpaste tube. Let me tell you something. I am actually able to make that last forever. I have this weird theory where I don't actually believe that the toothpaste runs out. Yeah. I just keep squeezing, it just keeps coming out. Yeah. I, I roll it up and it's still there. And it won't go away until somebody else uses it. I buy a fancy toothpaste and it comes in the smaller toothpaste containers. You have little diamonds in your toothpaste? No. It really gets the black out. Yeah. I like Tom's all natural Listen, main diamonds toothpaste. Diamonds are evil, Artosis. So nice. You know where diamonds come from? Oh, diamonds are evil. Can't believe you have diamond toothpaste, Artosis. I know. Uh, get a cubic zirconium. It looks the same. No, but it it's, doesn't. It doesn't look as good. It doesn't look People as good. People nice. can tell. 
I don't want to fake for code. I want to make sure an animal dies. <laughs> All right, we are going to game number two here on Dual Side. I hope it's as awesome as the uh, first game we had. It was a lot of fun to cast that. It was a lot of fun to watch that. I can't wait to get this game going here. Lee Knock against MVP here at the GSL Code S.